In this video, we're gonna be talking about home sellers and their options when their house isn't selling in this changed market. Hey, I'm Jeff Chubb and I'm a retired investment banker turned real estate agent and I've sold more than a thousand houses. And I'm here with? Sam Leopolis and I'm one of the top 300 loan officers in the United States and work with Guaranteed Rate. Jeff, the market has changed a lot in the last six months of 2022. Sellers went from being at the party and having an amazing time to, well, having the dreaded next day hangover. Yeah, it's true. Sellers are having to adapt to this new marketplace. It's a market where buyers actually hold the upper hand in a lot of cases. I was reading an article about how sellers are starting to have to toss in the kitchen sink and more in order to get their house sold. Jeff, what has your experience been? All right, the market is definitely slowed. And what I'm seeing is that the homes that are in good condition and price right, ultimately they're the ones that are selling. The ones that are overpriced, not in the greatest of conditions, are either sitting or they're selling at big discounts. That makes sense as the article I was reading mentioned that 42% of recent sellers have offered at least one concession to home buyers. Sammy, that's a really great point. And what we are going to talk about, quite frankly, what are those concessions that sellers are offering and what are a seller's options when it comes to actually selling their home? All right, so what are those concessions that a seller can offer? Well, typically a seller is offering a concession in the form of a cash credit for things like repairs or a closing cost credit. And with rates increasing like they have, we've seen more and more sellers offering concessions to buy down a buyer's mortgage rate. People often get lost in the weeds on the buy down of the rate and how that works. Yeah, the two one buy down. I mean, it is a little confusing, but that's ultimately why we got you here today. But first, offering your credit for repairs is a great solution if there's a defect on the property that might be hard to get to while living there. Think worn hardwood floors or maybe older carpet. It can be a real pain in the backside to do those improvements when you live in that space and maybe have furniture, right? While these credits are great and buyers do appreciate them, you don't necessarily get the increased value of that benefit that you would if they've already been done. That all makes sense, and I see that all the time. I'm also seeing more and more closing cost concessions. Yeah, absolutely. And buyers, they're loving it. Sammy, on average, how would you say the closing costs on a, how much would you say that those closing costs on a house are? I would say about one and a half to 2% of the purchase price, uh, but keep in mind that percentage will change from state to state. Okay, exactly. I mean, I always use a state like Delaware as my example. That's where I'm originally from. And the transfer tax for a buyer in Delaware is one and a half percent alone. That's before all the lender and insurance closing costs. So on a $500,000 house here in Massachusetts, then I could ultimately expect closing costs to be in the ballpark of what? $7,500 to $10,000. And this is also going to include the pre-funded escrows as well as the insurance. That sounds about right. And buyers should keep in mind that this is on top of their down payment. I can't tell you how many times people will get in the trouble because they say I have X to put down as a down payment, then they don't factor in the closing costs. Yeah, that's why I like people working with you, quite frankly. I know you're always, you always take the time to really explain that. And we actually recently had one client that was adamant on putting 150 grand down. It took many conversations to get them to understand that you couldn't put all 150 grand down and you need to actually use some of that to go towards uh, the down payment and then those closing costs. Yeah, I believe in their case it was like 135,000 down and and 15,000 went to towards closing costs. And, like that. and that that was a quick tangent, but I really think a good one because closing cost assistance would be a seller paying for the buyer's closing costs. So, in the $500,000 example, then a seller would be offering the closing cost credit of let's just say 7,500 bucks, thereby limiting the buyer's all in expenses. Uh, quick side note and a piece of caution for seller, uh, that is, the seller does have to worry about in the house appraising covering those closing costs. Yeah, and that's a really Really great point. Uh, you got to worry about that appraisal. And there are ways that a good agent will offer some protection to that seller uh, client of theirs. Okay, Sammy, let's talk about the complicated one that has come back with a vengeance with these rates going up. What does it mean when a seller buys down a buyer's rate and how does it work? Are that two to one buy down? Yeah, ultimately using those seller credits that we just mentioned, but applying to the bank where they can reduce the mortgage rate for a period of two years. Okay. So tell me if my math and my kind of thought process is correct. Mm -hmm. Say mortgage rates are six and a half percent and a seller agrees to buy down my rate doing that two to one buy down. Then in year one, my mortgage rate is going to be around four and a half percent. Year right. two, it could be five and a half percent. And then year three, we're back to that original note where it's at six and a half percent. Yes, sir. Real quick. Another thing that I'm seeing around the country is that a lot of builders are offering bonuses to buyers agents, giving upgraded credits and closing cost credits to home buyers. Yeah, I've also seen a builder here in Boston. <laughs> 
offer five years of prepaid condo fees, offering bonuses to eight real estate agents, upgrade credits, and prepaid condo fees are really some great ways to separate you from your competition. I mean, and they're doing it. Builders have a need to sell, which is why they're going to be darn competitive. You know what, you, you actually nailed it there. Um, and it's a really great point. They have an actual need. If you're a seller and you don't need to sell, then maybe this isn't the exact right time to sell. And I will say this, if you're a move up buyer though, then taking it a little bit on the chin on that smaller, less expensive asset and selling it might be worth it in order to get that better discount on the more expensive one though. What do you mean, Jeff? All right, let's use a 10% discount as an example. And this is just to make my life easy. I'm not saying the market's down 10%. But let's say I'm selling a $500,000 house and having to give that 10% discount. So that means I'm gonna take a $50,000 you know, hit in the chin there, right? Mm -hmm. But let's say I'm buying a million dollar house as my move up house. Well, that's a 10% discount would be $100,000 on that million dollar property. So that's a net benefit to that move up buyer of 50 grand. Jeff, talk to me a little bit more about condition when it comes to a seller and selling home. Okay, now as I mentioned earlier, the houses that are priced right and in good condition, those are the ones that are selling. So in this competitive market, it's actually about getting your house in that optimal selling condition. The issue becomes people having the resources to do the repairs though. That's a big one, I mean that really is. And, and it's exactly right, and that's why actually our company has partnered with another company that will actually do the work during the pre-listing stage. Um, and that could be like light work, like painting, or maybe redoing floors to big work like baths and kitchens. And then the seller lists the property and sells it. And then that owner only pays the construction company back once that property has sold. So even if you don't have the funds, then you can still get your house in the optimal condition. Exactly, I mean, that's exactly the point. You know, ultimately when there's that will, well, you're gonna find that way, right? Well, Jeff, I think we did it. Uh, there are some of the things that seller can do to in order to make their houses a little bit more competitive. So if you're thinking about making a move to Massachusetts, then be sure to reach out to this guy. He's one of the top agents agents in the state and we'll take great care of you. I can't begin to tell you how much experience matters and finding a quality agent will make the difference between a good experience and a miserable one. And look, if you're thinking about buying a home here in Massachusetts, or quite frankly, really anywhere in the country, then Sammy, he can help you. He works for the number two lender in the country and is one of their top 10 mortgage bankers in that company. Now, I've worked with a lot of mortgage bankers in the past. And I say this not because you're standing next to me, but he's truly one of the best in the business and you're not gonna regret reaching out to Sammy. All of our contact information, it's in the description below. So let us know if you have any questions, but ultimately, until next time.